What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm going to be showing you eight more awesome series shortcuts for your iPhone, iPad or iPod Touch. Now if you missed my last video where I showed off 18 awesome series shortcuts, definitely check out that video. It's up in the cards right now and also down in the description below. Those are 18 of my favorite ones. And now again, today I'm going to be showing eight more series shortcuts that I have been using a lot over the past couple months. Now if you still don't know what series shortcuts are, I have made a full playlist on my channel about them. I'll show you exactly what they are, how to build your own Siri shortcut as well as my favorite Siri shortcuts that have been pre-made or ones that I've made that I just think are going to be really useful. So if you want to check out that playlist and learn all about Siri shortcuts, that is also up in the cards right now and down in the description below. All right, so let's just go ahead and get into the shortcut. So the very first one is called Gas Nearby, and this is just a very simple shortcut that's going to show you nearby gas stations. So you can see right here I have Find Gas Nearby, and once I click on that, it will show me all the gas stations nearby. Now, of course, I am going to blur these out just so you guys can't figure out exactly where I live, but it shows every single one of these and how far away it is from my house. If you click on one of them, it will actually take me to the maps application and show me exactly how to get there. So this is a super, super useful and convenient shortcut to have, especially when you are traveling. So if you're in a city or a town or even a country that you don't know and you don't know where you know the close by gas stations are, you don't really know the streets very well, this is a great shortcut to have so you can find that gas station nearby. If you go ahead and click on these three dots, I'll show you how this was built. It's actually very, very simple. And you can see right here, it starts off with a search local business. And of course, the search is going to be for gas stations. And then the radius is actually in kilometers. We're searching within 1.5 kilometers. And then, of course, it spits that data into a list right here, which we have the choose from list command right here. And we have the prompt, which we have which convenience store do you want to go to? And we have the option select multiple turned off. And then, of course, we have that going into show directions on the map for driving. So this is a very simple shortcut to set up. There's really not much to learn about setting up this series shortcut, but I did just want to show you in case you wanted to build it by yourself. And of course you can customize all these things to your liking. Now the next shortcut is alarms with intervals. And this is a very useful one again, that allows you to set X amount of alarms every five minutes. Now you can change that as well. So let me just go and show you what I'm talking about. So if we click on this, you can see it actually shows what time do you want your first alarm set for? So, so you have to go to work at like eight in the morning, so we probably want to set our alarm for about 7.15 a.m. So let's click OK. And then how many alarms do you want to set after 7.15? So if you want, you know, maybe an alarm at 7.15, another one at 7.20, another at 7.30, you could do that. So let's say three alarms. OK, so after we just typed in three there, it automatically knows that three alarms. So it's going to be every five minutes. So it automatically set three alarms every five minutes after what we set for 715. So if we go ahead to my alarms now, you can see I have three alarms already set in here, already toggled on. And that is a great way to save time. So you don't have to just manually go in here and set three different alarms and toggle them on or off. It does it for you. And of course, you can customize that as well. So if you go into these three dots right here, you can see the prompt right here. Of course, what time do you Want your first alarm you just select the date and the time and then we have the input for how many alarms and the input type of course is going to be a number and we're going to minus one the operand minus one because we don't want to count the first alarm as the or we do want to count the first alarm sorry as the first alarm so we're minusing one right there so that we only set two alarms so if we put in three and this command right here it's only going to set two alarms after the original time because we don't want to have you know three more alarms on top of that one we want three total so we have to minus the first one right there so you can see right here then we have create alarm right there so of course we have the time variable in there right now. And you can basically see how this goes from here. This is probably one that you're going to want to just copy and paste. Of course, the links for all these uh, shortcuts will be down in the description below. So you don't have to build these. But you can see right here, if you wanted to change this, if you wanted to be not every five minutes, but you wanted to be like every 15 minutes or every 10 minutes, you can change the operand right here and calculate to whatever you want. And this is how many minutes in between each interval alarm there's going to be. So again, if you want it to be maybe just say 15 minutes in between each alarm, you could do so right there. So yeah, a really cool shortcut. I don't really necessarily recommend, you know, you just keep setting multiple alarms to get up and, you know, give yourself more time. But for some people, this will be a very useful shortcut. So the next shortcut is another very useful one that allows you to send delayed text messages. So if we go ahead and click on this, you can select your contact. So I'm just gonna select my contact right here. 
We're going to just say maybe it's somebody's birthday in a little while, maybe an hour. We're going to say happy birthday. And then you have the schedule for when you want to send it. Now, just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to do one minute in advance just to show you that it does work. If you click on OK, you can see right there, it's basically thinking it's going through and it will send it once the clock turns to 323. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you do need to have background app refresh on for this to work. And you also cannot run any other shortcut. Now, you can go out of the application. You can do all kinds of things. You can lock your device. You can do all that and it will still send the text message. You just can't run any other shortcut. And again, you do need to have background app refresh on. So I have my other phone right here and we're just waiting for that text message to come through. It should come through here in a few seconds. You can see right there, it's pretty much nearing the end of the shortcut, which means it's pretty much almost 3.23 p.m. There we go, you can see it did send the text message right there. We got the little animation as well. So pretty cool that you can send delayed text messages here on the iPhone using shortcuts. And if we take a look at how this was built, if we go into the three dots right here, it's a very simple one. So you can build this by yourself if you want to, but again, links are going to be in the description if you wanna save some time and just import it into your library. All we have is select the contact and then we have the input and we set that variable as text. Then we have ask for input, what do you want to say in the message? And then of course you have the time that you want to send it using the get time between dates. And of course the wait command is the secret sauce here for this to work. And then of course we have the send message right here as well using the text variable that we set once we put it in to the input right here. So a pretty simple yet a very effective shortcut there. The next one is InstaSave and this allows you to save Instagram posts, allows you to save Instagram stories, pretty much everything on Instagram you could save instantly with this shortcut. So if we go into our Instagram application, I'll show you exactly how this works. It's very, very simple and very easy. So you can see right here we have a post. If you wanted to save this image right here very easily, we can click these three dots right here, click share to, shortcuts and then tap on insta save it will run through all this it wants to access your photos okay and now it's instantly saved into our camera roll so if we go ahead into our photos you can see right there it is in our camera roll just like that in its full quality now you can do this with videos as well and you can also do this with stories but with stories it is a little bit tricky you do need to do it inside of safari you can't actually do it from the application so it's a little bit more tricky with stories but you can do it inside of safari once you have the story loaded up inside of safari just click on this right here, go to shortcuts and then click on Insta save right there and it will save the story. And speaking of Safari, the next shortcut is called tilt to scroll. And this allows you just like the name implies to tilt your device to scroll it and tilt it back to scroll back up. So you tilt down to scroll down, tilt up to scroll up. Now it's gonna be hard to demonstrate since I do have a dock right here, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And you could test this out on your own. It's actually more useful, and a lot more intuitive than I originally thought it was going to be. So if you click on the share icon right here, go to shortcuts, tilt scroll, it's gonna run through this right here. And you can see, since I do have it on a dock, it starts scrolling instantly. And if we go ahead and tilt it back, you can see it kind of stops. If we tilt it forward, it goes a little bit faster down. And this is very useful if you're holding your phone, if you're, you know, your neck is looking down, your face is looking down at the phone. Uh, it's a lot more convenient and actually makes sense. If you have your phone like this and it's on a dock, it doesn't really make any sense just because it's just going to keep scrolling by itself and it's kind of annoying. Uh, but this is really handy if you are, again, looking down at your phone and it actually works really, really well. And this will keep going throughout the web pages as well. And the way to stop it is just by clicking on refresh and then you will have to run it again. So that is tilt scroll. And this is a very advanced one. So you're not going to be able to build this yourself. Uh, if you go into these three dots right here, you're going to see it. it's just a lot of JavaScript code right here. Uh, obviously you will want to just download this from the link in the description below, but it shows exactly how it's built right here. Next up is U control, and this is a very enhanced control center. So we're going to activate this from over here in the widgets panel, because I find this to be the best place to run it and the most convenient place to run it. So you'll see it's right here. I have it first on here because this is one that I run all the time. This and find guests nearby are ones that I run all the time from the widgets panel. So if we go and tap on you control V2 right there, let's click on show more. You can see right here, we have all of these different options right here. Basically things that are very similar to what you would find in the control center. So we could turn cellular on or off, Wi-Fi, mute, camera, brightness, low power mode, Bluetooth. So if you wanted to completely turn off Wi-Fi from the control center, you can now do so instead of just temporarily disabling it. If you go ahead and click on Wi-Fi, you can see Wi-Fi options. You are currently connected to the Wi-Fi network right there. You can turn it on, off, or you can see network details straight from within the control center. It's not really the control center, but it is you control now in the widgets panel. So it's really cool you could do all that. 
And if you go ahead back and go ahead and click on something like camera, you have the option to choose selfie camera, back camera, or go to photos. If we go to brightness, you can see you could choose low, medium, or max brightness right there. And you get the idea. You can go through all of these and you get more options once you click on them to do you know whatever specific thing you're trying to do. Again, really handy to have right here in the widgets panel. And of course, this is another one that you are just going to have to download from the description below because it is pretty advanced and it would take a long time to build this yourself. The next shortcut is boarding airplanes. So this is a very, very useful one that I actually just used when I got to New York City and on my way back from New York City last week. So once you click on this, you actually get to select whatever airline you took or whatever airline you're flying on. So for me, it was Delta. So if I click on select on Delta, you put in the flight number. For, so I'm just going to put in a fake number for now. And then you choose a contact, which I just did. And then it shows boarding. It just, you can customize that as well. And then it shows a link to the actual flight number so that whoever you're sending this to will automatically be able to tell, you know, if it's delayed, if it's, you know, running early, where it's gonna be, you know, what gate and things like that. So it's very handy to have and to send, you know, to click on the shortcut to send this information to shortcut to uh, contacts, I should say, that are maybe gonna pick you up from the airport or just wondering if you're safe, things like that. So it's very, very convenient for something like that. And then we send the message. And if we go into our messages right here, you can see if we go and click on this, it will actually show us the live flight status. Again, it shows you all of the specific details. So this is actually a flight six months or nine months ago. So, uh, so yeah, really cool again to send to loved ones or, you know, maybe somebody that's picking you up from the airport or something like that. And this is another one that's pretty advanced and you're probably just going to want to download it from the description below, uh, just because you will have to put in all the airlines and things like that and then set it into the link right here. And the final shortcut I wanted to show you guys today is Google reverse image search. And if you guys don't know what reverse image searching is online, it's basically used to just find the origin of a specific image. So if you think an image has been posted before, if you think a girl's sending you a fake picture, you could click this and confirm that and it will show where it originated from online. So if we go ahead and click on that, we can choose our photos. Let's just choose this one right here. And it may take some time to think right here and then it will open up Google right here. And you can see it actually shows where this image came from. So you can see how accurate it is right there as well. So these are very, very similar images. So this is one way to be able to tell if you know certain images online are the original or not. And again, it's very convenient to have this in a shortcut format instead of having to go into Google and upload it there and everything like that. If we click the three dots right here, this one is also very simple to set up, but you will probably just want to download it from the link in the description below. It's basically just putting variables into the Google search uh, URL there. So you will just have to download this from the description description below as well. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are eight more awesome Siri shortcuts. I hope you guys did enjoy these. I hope you found them as useful as I do. If you did find this video useful and you downloaded any of these Siri shortcuts, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and also subscribe for a lot more future Siri shortcuts videos. But yeah, thanks again for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you soon.